Aloha. This is Emily Thoreau Thrift, host of the Grief and Happiness Podcast. Every Friday, I share with you my love notes, giving you a little something to think about as you navigate through your grief journey, finding happiness expanding along your way. And every Tuesday, I post my regular podcast sharing wonderful conversations with people you can relate to and who offer you encouraging ideas and helpful inspiration. I'm so grateful you're joining me and look forward to hearing from you your thoughts. My podcast is Everything is Temporary. In Bali, there are temples everywhere. Most families live in compounds with every element located in the ideal place, and every compound has a temple. The temple, or family shrine, is always placed at the northeast corner of the compound. These shrines are made out of soft stones that are intricately carved to honor the ancestors and gods. When a Balinese man gets married, he builds a shrine for that. These carvings are expensive to have done, So many families construct the temples and shrines with flat stones and have them carved as they can afford to. What fascinates me is that these carvings only last three to six years as they disintegrate in the elements. This makes the maintaining of all these shrines and temples on Bali an ongoing process. And all of the carving is done by hand, no power tools. The Balinese also pray every day and make offerings to the gods. Small decorative baskets are woven from coconut palm fronds, and inside are placed four different kinds of flowers representing the colors of the four directions. And food is always included as well as a lit incense. You can see these everywhere in Bali, thousands of them, fresh every day. They're beautiful, and they get tossed in the trash. The calendar is different in Bali. A new year starts every 210 days. Along with this calendar, there are many celebrations in the Bali year, along with blessings and celebrations for weddings and lots of other things. Whole communities participate in the celebrations and the streets are always lined with festive penjor. These are tall, up to 31 feet tall, decorated bamboo poles that bend gracefully over the roads that they line. The decorations are all created by hand, and at the end of the celebration, they're taken down and burned. All these beautiful things have short lives, but the communities continue to create them to constantly celebrate, honor, and be surrounded by beauty. We traveled over to the water temple in Tithra Impul on our last day together. Erected over a natural spring, the temple was created as a place of cleansing, Our wonderful guide was a friend of Gaia Ceramics who owns a vegan restaurant and a sustainable garden near Gaia. He explained that we all take showers or baths to wash away what we can see on the outside, but the Balinese believed it's also important to wash away what doesn't show symbolically. This allows us to release what we no longer need and make space for what we aspire to. To do this, we enter the springs fully clothed including a sarong. Then we walk up to the spout of the crystal clear flowing water to cleanse however we want to. The source of the water for all people and all of the spouts is the same as the source of everything. Experiencing this beautiful ritual was refreshing and restoring. I used the opportunity to focus on what was most important to me. This was a fitting end to my Bali journey which demonstrated the impermanence and fragility of the material aspects of life, as well as the strength and importance of love, which lasts forever. I am grateful I said yes to this journey. Do you want more comfort, support, and happiness? Join the Grief and Happiness Alliance. Visit my website at lovingandlivingyourwaythroughgrief.com and read my book, Loving and Living Your Way Through Grief. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, rate it, review it, and binge on all our episodes on grief and happiness. I can't wait to welcome you back to another episode.